Hey, how's it going guys? This is Derek with Drizza Auto. Some of you may know me from some of my friends' videos, um, but for those of you that don't, I specialize in Nissan and JDM cars, particularly R34, 35, 32s, Sylvia's, 180SX's, and so on. On this video, we're gonna be doing the timing chain, installing the head, torquing it down, and putting all the components on the intake manifold, turbo manifold turbo and we're going to be installing it back into this car so we've started with the uh time and chain guide now we're going to go with the follow guide and then set the chain in place okay. oh don't forget that o-ring or you're going to lose oil pressure make sure everything's torqued down then we're going to install that timing cover oil pump assembly make sure it's all torqued down and all right so now what we have is a set of brand new dowel pins that um we're going to install on these on this block so ensure that our cylinder head is completely straight I don't like to use, um, reuse the old ones because they do have, it, it's spring tension and I, I've noticed that they move like ever so little and I don't like that. Okay. I just moved it. Make sure it's good. all right this upper oil pan is getting some silicone to be installed as i hand it off to zachary for him to install it he's looking pretty good steady hands then the uh oil splash pan followed by the oil pan assembly that we like to use for larger capacity. I like to put some silicone on these plugs, so make sure that they don't have any kind of oil leaks or drips or anything like that. And a quick flip and we move on to the head gasket placement. I do put some silicone on the front of that gasket so we don't have any oil leaks because of all the oil that's splashing up it do tend to have a little bit of oil seepage to it. Then we're going to place the head onto the block. It just takes a little bit of finessing with the guides and the chain. so. Now Zachary's got all the head, uh, the nuts and the washers to put on the head studs. So he's getting pretty good hands on with this whole uh, bill assembly here. We're going to follow by torquing down the cylinder head. So it, it goes in sequence. It takes some time to get this done. So I've got already the exhaust side one and two in. So final cleaning before I put the shims and the rocker arms in. So I just always keep them in bags separately um, when we shim them out to make sure that we have them back in the right position. So. On final assembly, it's faster that way, and we're not looking and running a feel gauge back through them. And also, it's not primed and pumped up, the lifters, so you can get a, a false reading. So before we take them apart, we actually do that and take our measurements. 
All right, so this is all the exhaust shims and rocker arms set in place. We're gonna go ahead and do the intake side. After that, I make sure that I slather this thing really good with um, lube assembly. Uh, make sure every little crack and cranny gets the lube. Followed by the uh, camshafts and also repeating that step of really, really lubing all the camshaft and the assemblies. Then we're going to go to the exhaust side, lubing it also. For me, I always try to go a little bit extra on the lube, um, following by putting the cam caps and getting the cam caps with the uh, rocker stoppers installed on the camshafts. I need a second hand. Second hand? I need a third and fourth hand. Okay, I could lend a hand. Nothing, because you got, yeah, I've been replaced. Yeah, temporarily. Temporarily, just for this one bill. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I'm fine being behind the camera, learning a new skill every day. Hopefully, I'm doing an okay job. You guys feel free to let me know in the comments. Middle. Always start from the middle. Yep. Not only okay. is this a tutorial for you guys, but Zachary okay. is getting a hands-on tutorial right now, right? Yep. I mean, this okay, is his engine. Up. He should know how to work on it inside out. Yeah, I'm going to build it once. If anything happens, he's got to do it himself. Hopefully nothing happens. Should do happen sometimes. So. Modify life. 240 life, Derek. 240 life. Uh, 240 modified. Okay. Mm, get see videos for my shorts. Let's drop down there. And see, it's it's raised here, so that's why you got to go equally. You should be paying attention. So next one, make sure it goes down evenly, or else you could snap the cam. All right, we we're not done. Look at the space. You got to pay attention. Okay, get these a little at a time, all of them. And for these guys Both that sides. are watching, what are you explaining to him, Derek? Uh. We're explaining that you have to make sure that the cam gets bolted down evenly, so it's um, so you don't snap the cam because camshafts are hollow; they literally could snap and very, very easily. Yeah. So you start from the middle, and then you work um, generally one turn, one turn, one turn until you get them. Middle. These are not done yet. Oh. You could see that. You could see like the gap. The, you got gap. To, you got to pay attention to the gaps. See some are needing more turns than others. Yeah, because this side locks down first, and then this side is there. So you got to pay attention. This is still okay. Do you? Nice. This one's down. Down. Okay. Yeah. All right. Both sides evenly. You could maybe help me with the cameras. If I need to step away. Evenly, please. Okay, stop, 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 stop. You're concentrating on this one. Now the cam is going to be bending this way. You need to go equally all across. Not about tightening that only one. See how that one's tight? Because you're, there, you're doing one side at a time. You got to do it equally like I told you. Guess we're all getting schooled today. Felt that pop? Okay, now the cam just sat down. So go ahead. That's because it wasn't even. Look at this one. We're good? Think so? You look um, at all of them? Does that need okay. to be torqued as well? Yeah. No, it's a small torque, not the big one. Let's see, right there somewhere. Oh, look at the tiny, tiny. But, um,. Torquing to spec for an everyday street driving car um, enthusiast, the spec is good. The head studs, sorry, um, are a little bit tighter, but everything else is 
pretty much going to be regular. All right, so we are, our mark is there. We're good. Okay. Go ahead. Extension, small one. <coughs> the other way. All right, so we've got our cam gears set up um, to where we we would like it. Um, so we're putting some Loctite on here, and we're gonna put these in. I usually use like blue Loctite on there. And then we'll take off all the slack that we have here by rotating the in, the engine backwards. I just usually do it this way, so it. I give it a little bit, uh, I get a little bit more leeway to play with in terms of putting the timing chain on. So now we're going to go back and rotate it. And what we got, we got that snugness there. Um, I'm going to keep some tension on there. There we go. We're still we're still going to be using the hydraulic tensioner. Um, on this one, I don't feel like we need to have a lock solid tensioner. So, okay. 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 Ratchet. A quick rotation backward to lock the timing chain tensioner in place, uh, followed by lubing the camshafts, and a quick rotation so that everything is saturated and moves nice and smooth. Moving on, we're going to be putting on the accessories such as the alternator, uh, water pump pulley, the power steering pump assembly with the manif intake manifold. As you can see, Zachary's really pushing through with this. While he's doing that, I'll be installing the CAS. And help him finish up all the little things that we've got going on. Zachary has been really pushing through with all of this. He's been dying to have this car driving and running for a while. So he's eager to get into it and get this engine into that car. I'm really proud of the motivation that he's putting into it and pushed uh, to get this thing done. This is not something that he likes to do, um, but with this particular one, he wants to get it and he's determined. So there is definitely really good motivation. So everything is in. We have the cams, we have them adjusted and ready to go. And we're doing our final torque on this thing, and this is what we got. Oh, where are you? See? Magnet. Where piece. did the other piece go there? I'm looking for it. I gotta find it. Calm down. Relax. We're not. We're not taking this engine back apart. It's just a washer that fell. Okay. We don't need it. It'll be in there. It'll chew it up by the time and chain. You can find it. Well, maybe. Maybe we have to stress a little bit. Nothing in the pan. Get a boroscope. All right, 
after looking for about an hour and a half and as soon as I moved it probably about 10 degrees my washer just dropped out but I've been looking so for this it, thing you're for, thinking it fell and... it probably got stuck on the gear on the timing chain so by me moving it a little bit it just decided to drop out well I'm just glad that we found it and we don't have to open everything back up yeah I am too oh my gosh all right so the bolt that snapped is all the way in there you probably could see a little bit of it there we'll definitely have to um do some skill drilling here and tapping out so let's get to it this is extremely stressful and tedious um lots of things could go wrong uh, a, a little piece of shard could literally destroy this engine before we get it running properly. Uh, the threads could be messed up, so I'd have to go in and do a helicoil setup on it, which I don't like to do on cylinder heads, especially for uh, something that we're shooting for a higher power than stock. Well, the surgery is going well so far, Derek. One piece one bit down yep one bit down uh let's uh get another one on and see how that goes this is like going to the dentist almost have a cavity done no one have anything to say not right now gotta right concentrate now. As Zachary has finished cleaning the surface up, I'm gonna silicone the oil pan and give it to him so he could finish bolting it up. Then we're gonna flip this engine back upright and lubricate it and give it a quick rotation to make sure everything is lubed and has enough oil there. So we could install that valve cover. Everything is looking pretty good. Uh, we're gonna finally put the valve cover back on. Then we're gonna move on to the flywheel clutch assembly and get this thing ready. How's it going guys? Today is the big day. The engine is finally finished and we are getting ready to put that engine in the car. Finally ready. Zachary and Derek, have been, they've been prepping and doing everything that they need to do. But I think we are finally at that stage. Um, I mean, there's no turning back right now. We just got to mount it in, put our trans in and... Fingers crossed. It's pouring out. It's late in the evening, but we are determined to stay here and get it in. That being said, let's go ahead and get the engine in the car. Yes. Run, Derek. Alright guys, it is finally time for the transmission. Um, go ahead and get this on and we are getting one step closer to starting up. Alright, so we had this transmission installed. We couldn't get it to bolt up all the way uh, flush with the uh, back of the engine. And we kind of figured out because somebody did not pay attention to the dowel that's frozen in there or stuck in there. So now we're going to go try to attempt to get this out and then put the transmission back in.
Yep. So with a little success of uh, the welding and an old 10 bolt, we're able to weld that and then fateful slap hammer. Pull it out. We got that dial turned out. So it saves us a lot of time from drilling and getting this thing out. So we're back on getting this in, this transmission back into the Take car. two. Yep. Okay guys, as you can see, we've been having a lot of challenges with this engine bill, the whole process of getting everything together. But now that we have the uh, dowel pin removed, we're gonna go ahead and install the transmission and hopefully get back on track and things will move along a little smoother. Um, it's just been really challenging and we are all ready to get this over with to get everything you know up and running and go from there right guys yeah do we all feel the same way yeah done with this yes so let's get that transmission in and we could start working on something else i don't know what you guys are trying to do but there's some sketchy stuff going on right now i just want this thing to be done with transmission tilting we got the engine just barely hanging on on the pole jack. This is going really well today, really well. Need some more lighting there? It always need more lighting. Okay, let me see what I can get you. Do we need to turn? You want me to do it? Oh, there we go. I think we're in. I would say successfully. Yep. One try. Awesome. Now that the dry shaft is finished, we're going to move on to getting the drain plug in there. Make sure we have some fresh sealant so we have no oil leaks afterwards. And Zachary's getting ready to put some fresh fluid in this transmission. As me and Zachary finishing up the uh, last part of the exhaust system here then we're going to move up to the top of the engine and we're going to get all the stuff that we need to get done on the top while he finishes up the coolant hose i'll be finishing up some fluids now we move on to the wiring harness which uh we're going to be installing a brand new wiring harness the previous one was also a brand new harness, but we had some sensor reference issues that um, we didn't like. So we're moving on to a harness that actually proved itself to us and we've used them several times before. So I went back with a harness that I know uh, it's going to work for us and not give us tons of issues. As we we're taking some time and caution and not to rip and, and destroy a brand new harness, but it's coming along pretty good. All right, let's crank it up. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking these lifters should have been pumped up by now. Alright guys, as we've all heard, there is a noise that's coming from underneath that valve cover. So we're going to go ahead and pull this cover off and figure out where this noise is coming from.
okay to get ready to shut it off back, right? Right away. I want to make a mess. I want to listen to where if I could see the noise. That's all it is. We're turning it on. Yeah, we're like starting the car. Okay. It's just going to make a, a huge mess. Did you shut it off or again? Okay, maybe a light throttle, not heavy. All right, guys. What we found is that the oil stick tube for number one cam lobe, it's not lubricating the cam lobe uh, very well. It has a slight restriction. So what we're going to do is remove it, clean it up, and reinstall it and then we're going to recheck afterwards and see how it goes how's it going guys today uh we are back on the sr20 derek and zachary they've been putting in a lot of time trying to get everything going but we have eric from vanquish tuning in the house um he is helping us with uh getting uh setting up the tuning getting everything dialed in so we could get this car on the road. All right, so Zachary's gonna explain to us a little bit of what we're doing, what we're setting up. So we swapped the OEM cast wheel out and we put an AEM cast wheel. So at higher RPM, the computer's not confused with the OEM one. It should help adjust the timing at higher RPM when the car's running. How are we looking, Derek? You don't know. How are we looking, Eric? Oh, it's looking fantastic. Awesome. That's the word I'm looking for, Derek. I said it starts. <laughs> That's all I said. It starts. I don't know. Calibrations going good? Yeah. Yep, we just got finished calibrating all the sensors. Awesome. Right, so pretty much setting timing, base timing, right? All right, here we're verifying the TPS um, because all of a sudden we've lost our signal for it. So we just wanted to make sure that we don't have any kind of issues, but we figured it out. It was just a loose connection. All right, guys, it's finally time. The car is running, and Zachary is getting ready to take it out for a drive. Let's flip this camera around and see how he does. If you want, rather get him uh, on the, for the first, first time. <laughs> No AFRs? No AFR.
Today we have the S13 doing some funny noises in the parking lot. Um, Zachary's trying to get some tuning stuff done, getting the fuel, so uh, fuel trim uh, a little bit better. He's super excited. Um, let's go see what he's doing. He's in the actually lot. been doing a lot of work himself. Like the other day, we had Eric from Vanquish tuning here, and he helped set up a few things. Explained that, a lot of things to yeah, him. Absolutely, and since then, that's been like in the car just doing his own tuning figuring stuff out and we both think he's doing a great job yeah so far. and the guys at holotech helped out yesterday a lot yep. with and also um the guys that wire, wire wiring specialties, specialties. Yeah. had some great help and input. um so he's been doing amazing i think right yeah first time and uh first time and he's figuring things he's out figuring it so out quickly. so quickly um, so it's been great so far. Uh, let's go take a look and see. Get yeah. Him, get him. It's like weird because like when I did that first one right there, it worked. But when I came back around and tried doing it again, it didn't work. Like the throttle didn't work. Okay. We have to figure it out. Um, don't put any correction to it. Uh, TPS is working. It's calibrated. Feels good. What do you gotta, think is going on with all the smoke? Uh, it's probably residual stuff from the last time with the, that was left in the exhaust. Okay. But uh, we got to get all that burnt out and um, get some of this fuel trim dialed in and uh, go from there. And that's all this guy. That guy. Yep. But it feels good. After four years, it's running, it's moving. Awesome. So, So that's after we did a slight throttle um, throttle chamber adjustment to bring the idle up uh, to clean it up a little bit. Really good. Yeah, it, we have to change it a little bit, I think. Yeah, we'll have to recalibrate the uh, TPS and then go from there with it. But it, it was better there. It responded. Yeah, it'll respond. Everything's better. That's what we do. We make it better a little at a time. Okay, you gotta watch your fuel trim around 2,000, 2,500. That's where we, we need to make an adjustment to get that hole out of there. All right, well, that sounds amazing, Derek. What's our next stop? Street tuning, 
and then drive it around for a little bit make sure everything's good before we take it on a dyno and pound on it pound on it i yes. don't know i don't like the sound of that we're but we're gonna squeeze all the power we could get out of this thing hopefully 600 full 600 there you go all right well we're shooting for that fingers crossed but we both want to say thank you guys for watching for following this series for you know giving us your inputs and um, feedback please continue to do so let us know if you have any questions we do post a lot more uh, daily content on instagram so if you guys are not following us on instagram link should be in below in this video also like and subscribe like derek said and we will see you guys on the next video when we take it to the dino